Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the EG4 Power Pro wall mount battery. This is the indoor version. And this is the brother to the outdoor version. I did some videos on that, so you'll probably hear me referencing that a few times in this video. Before I get into more detail and show you the unboxing and teardown, I'll just talk about some of the specs. This is a 280 amp hour, 48 volt battery, which adds up to 14.3 kilowatt hours of storage. And these are rated for 8,000 cycles. And I'll talk about this again, but although these are the indoor version, they have the heaters in them as well, just like the outdoor version. So I'm gonna jump right into it. I'm gonna show you guys some more detail on the battery, and then I'm gonna discuss some pros and cons. And then towards the end of the video, I'm gonna show how the new firmware on these batteries and some other models help them to interact with the Lux power inverters in a way they didn't before. Basically a whole new level of closed loop communication. All right, so I'm gonna get started. All right. And same as you'd get with the other Pro batteries, two two-aught cables, just like you would get with the exterior Pro batteries and a comms cable, communication cable. And check these feet out on these. I wonder if these unscrew so you can, let me look. So they do thread out. I don't know if that's meant for adjustment. It looks like the feet do. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So if you have an uneven floor, then you can use these to level things up. And I don't think I showed these in the last video on the other Pro batteries I have, but these are actually meant to mount to the mounting plate. These screw into the mounting plate of the battery to the mounting plate of the 18K PV. If you look in the manual, it'll show that. Now that I've got the sides off, you can see this model actually comes with two different sets of handles and then the ropes that the other one has also for lifting. So while it's still on its back here, I'm gonna see if I can pop the cover off and look inside this one also. This is why it's hard not to get excited about doing a teardown on some of these newer builds. I love to see how they do their wire management and how they run everything. So at first glance, this is very similar to the outdoor version. So this is 16 280 amp hour cells here. I wanted to show you guys something here. I didn't get to show it on my last video. Somebody, or I had a couple people ask about if these have compression on them. You can make out, just make out the banding here they have on here. So I'm not gonna pull all the cells out, but they usually, what they'll usually have is double banded right here. There'll be one up here and one down further down the cell. So everything is compressed there and screwed and bolted in. And of course, these are gonna have fire suppression just like the other one. So this is the bottom of it. And here is the top here. So these have fire suppression, bottom and top. And we have two four gauge conductors, positive and negative here. And you'll see the BMS down below behind this shield that they mount it with, which is super nice. And this is where things are gonna diverge a little bit from the other build. You have a ribbon cable here that goes to the screen on the outside. But a larger difference would be where they placed the positive and negative terminals here. So they are going out the top. I'll show you guys here in just a minute how it looks on the outside. But now you have the bus bars. These are two 600 amp bus bars here because they can support multiple batteries in parallel. So you can hook multiple batteries together here. So that sort of eliminates the need for a central bus bar system in a lot of cases, depending on how many of these you want to hook up. So here on the positive side, you have the two four gauge conductors going straight to the breaker. And then on the other side, it hooks straight to an L shaped bus bar. These have, let me see if I can get down on the side. If you guys can see, it goes straight into the breaker right there into the terminals on the breaker. And then straight to the bus bar on the positive side. And then the negative hooks straight to the BMS on that side with two screws and then straight out of the top. So pretty neat, you don't even have any wire 
on either side after that point. It's straight to bus bars. So just a very clean build, really nice design all around. So I'm gonna put the front cover back on and then ever so gently drag this over to where I'm gonna be installing it here on the wall. Yeah, these look like 3 8 bolts on the feet here. I bet you could thread casters on there pretty easy if you wanted to roll it around the shop instead. Although I guess you create your own kind of issues there. You could possibly pull a cable loose unless, you know, some casters do have brakes on them, but the feet are nice here for leveling. So this is a big difference between the outdoor rated version and the indoor. This, the outdoor rated versions had their positive and negative connections on the side. The indoor has everything on the top, the communication ports and the dip switches. So when you put, you can get a conduit box with these and I'll show you guys here in a little bit. But when you have the conduit box installed on the top, everything is gonna be inside. So all you'll see is the battery and the box on top. All your wiring and everything should be inside here. So let's check out how the screen looks. Turn that on. Oh, that is nice. Look at that, and then you have your state of charge bars here too. So usually they are 25, 50, 75, and 100 percent. Wow, look at that. That is cool. Definitely the nicest BMS display I have seen. It shows you everything on the screen, even shows you the different protocols it's set to right now. So it's set up for an EG4 Lux inverter right now. And then LRS485 is set up to EG4. Yeah, 280 amp hour battery. It shows you how much amperage is being used, which is nothing. <laughs> then here you can change the protocol. If you type in the password, you can change the protocol for RS485 or CAN protocol. You can even change the language to Spanish. Very neat. Then firmware version is right there, so that is visible. And then you can check the cell voltages of the whole pack. And looks like, yeah, temperature. So that's the different temperature sensors in the pack. So temperature sensor one, two, three, and four. So I'm 14 degrees Celsius on all the different temperature sensors. Very neat. They did a really good job with this. The whole display is super nice. So I was gonna add the installation of the EG4 6000 XP here into the review video, but I think it was gonna end up being too long. There's been a couple changes to the EG4 6000 XP. You can also get an indoor wireway that's compatible with it now. I think I'll just sneak this part into the video anyway. But like I said, this new conduit box here is for the PowerPro indoor model. And the XP, the knockouts have been changed slightly in some of the newer models. So let me show you how they work together here. You can see all the knockouts work perfect. And then also, look at this, they leave a notch out of the back so you can screw on the bottom flange of the XP. And they even leave these little knockouts here to be able to screw the screws on to this plate on the bottom. So that's a really good idea. I thought that was pretty cool. So yeah, it's designed to be compatible with the 18K PV also. And yeah, I'll get into all this in the next video. But in the meantime, I wanted to talk about the new firmware I mentioned at the beginning. So I will show a couple examples of what it looks like on the 18KPV, the two outdoor versions that I have wired into that. So this is what it looks like with two of the Pro batteries hooked into my 18KPV. You can see everything from state of charge to your state of health even, uh, how much current is going out of the batteries, temperature, and a minimum and maximum cell voltage. And that's for each battery. So I can show you here in just a second what it looks like on the 6000 XP with three of the LLS rack batteries also. So the more batteries you add, you'll just be able to scroll down and check on all of them. I like the fact that they even included the cycle count in there too, how many cycles the batteries have been through so far. 
So this is what I would probably describe as true closed loop communication. You can see each individual pack. You can also see their voltages and temperatures. This is helpful for a number of reasons. If your pack is way out of balance, you'll be able to see if there's one kind of lagging behind. If one faults out or has an alarm, you'll be able to see that as well. And just to clarify, this is on the monitoring page, the EG4 monitoring page, which you can look at on your computer, but you can also see it on the phone. So if you have a cabinet or two cabinets of rack batteries, you're gonna be able to see each individual battery. But on top of that, which I think is really neat, you're gonna be able to do any future firmware updates for the batteries through the LuxPower inverter, which means no more wires or cabling to do firmware updates which I think is completely awesome because I was never a big fan of that to begin with. So I wanted to cover a few points on this. The first would be which models does this apply to? So which model of EG4 batteries does this apply to? So the EG4 LL models, it would be the version two and above that this would apply to. And both pro models, so the outdoor and indoor version, it would also apply to that. Also, you can check and see if you have the latest firmware version on the EG4 site there. That last firmware update will have to be done old school with the cable, but from that point on, you should be good. Another thing I wanted to mention is this is specifically for the LuxPower unit, so this software, this firmware will work that way. They're compatible with each other. Also, I'm told that some of the wireless dongles may not be compatible with future firmware updates through the inverters for the batteries. So you can just call EG4 or email them, give them the serial number to your wireless dongle and make sure it'll work. And I'm sure another question people are going to ask is about the Life Power 4 batteries, because a lot of people have those rack batteries. They're extremely popular. And if you have the communications hub for those, which I would highly recommend, and you have an EG4 Lux Power inverter, there is something similar that's going to be available for people. As far as I know, though, with that, you cannot update the batteries through the inverter if there's any future firmware updates. But if you guys saw my video on using that little auto uploader that they offer now, that's not a huge deal anyway. All right, now that we've covered the firmware, I wanna jump into some pros and cons for the Indoor Pro battery. So the first pro would be price, and I'm gonna have a couple things attached to that, but I think for the features, these are a great price. So the first factor in there is not having to buy a cabinet with this battery. So if you're getting rack batteries, you have to buy a six or a three slot cabinet to go with it. So that adds additional cost, so that should be factored in when you're comparing rack batteries versus these batteries. And a second part about that would be the wiring. These come with the wire ready to hook to the inverter. So wiring is expensive depending on how long of a length you're gonna get, but these come with the wire ready to go. Another thing would be the form factor. Obviously they save space being up on a wall. So you can have one on the floor, you can even have one above that depending on where you're gonna be putting them. And with the outdoor version, they actually recommended 12 inches of space between the batteries. And that was because all the components, basically everything was on the sides of the battery. But these, most of the business is on the front, the screens on the front. The only thing that's on the side is the breaker. And you can reach in there, even if it was a tighter space and flip that. So I'm sure they still have a recommended spacing, but to me, you could get them pretty tight together. So these are gonna be even a tighter form factor than the outdoor version. Especially when you consider, like I said, these are nearly three rack batteries in one. So if you have two of these next to each other, they take up very little space on the wall versus a six slot battery rack right here. And then I've mentioned it already, but the fact that these have heaters in them, I think is huge. If people have an unheated shop or something like that, these are gonna be really nice for them. And the last pro, maybe it shouldn't even be included, but for me anyway, they look really cool. So as far as negatives or cons, I think weight is probably one to mention. These are 300 something pounds, so they're hard to get around. It depends on what kind of area you're trying to get them in. But wherever you're putting them, once they're up, they're up. So the installation might be kind of a pain depending on what you're doing. But after that, the weight is not really a factor, but it should be mentioned. And another thing to mention too is redundancy. So three rack batteries versus one of these. If something were to go wrong and this goes down, you are without a battery. But if you have three rack batteries and one of them goes down, you still have 200 amp hours or so of storage. So I think that's something to consider also. I think you can carry that too far though. A lot of people don't want to even use these all-in-one units. They would rather use separate components. 
and have separate charge controllers and everything just in case a charge controller goes down. All right guys, so in the next video, like I mentioned, I'm going to cover the installation of the EG4 6000 XP. But yeah, I wanted to mention that I am really encouraged by the way things are moving in the industry. Wiring and firmware updates and all that is getting easier by far. Plus things are getting way easier for people that are doing DIY installations. They're making it much simpler for people. You can have everything in such a tight area there, it's really nice. And updating the devices is becoming a lot easier too. So I'll leave a link in the description to the battery here. I really appreciate you guys watching and stay tuned.